Welcome back to Just a Little Bit. And Just a Little Bit is brought to you in part by Destination Sis Trunk, Broward County Culture Division, and Greater Fort Lauderdale Convention and Visitors Bureau. Uh, just a Little Bit is just that. It's just a little bit of news from the West Side Gazette, the NNPA, and other black news sources from around the diaspora. Yeah, just a little bit. So this week, uh, the news is about the trial, the trial of the century, of two centuries, the trial of Derek Chauvin and what he did in murdering George Floyd. Well, today the jury reached the verdict, and it says that... Uh, Derek Chauvin faces up to 40 years in prison for second degree murder, up to 25 years for third degree murder, and up to 10 years for second degree manslaughter. If you're not familiar with this case, the jury has found former Minneapolis police officer Derek Chauvin guilty of all the counts he was charged with over the death of George Floyd one of the most closely watched cases in modern memory, causing a national awakening to police violence on black people and systematic racism in this country. Following closing arguments and a short deliberation of the jury, Chauvin is found guilty of unintentional second degree murder, third degree murder, and second degree manslaughter. George Floyd was a 46-year-old black man from Houston who had moved to Minneapolis, I'm sorry, Minnesota, just three years before he was murdered, looking for a better life. He was a father and a brother who adored his mother, loved making music, and as a young man, Big Floyd was noted as a star athlete. This murder sparked protests in Minneapolis and across the United States and around the world. It triggered calls for police reform and introspections and contemplations on the issue of racial injustice. Now, in order to further understand the essence of this trial, it is important to review the following real instances of how black men have been targeted for murder. Trayvon Martin, walking home. Michael Brown, walking in the neighborhood unarmed. Freddie Gray, arrested for possession of knife. Tamara Rice, playing with a toy gun. Breonna Taylor, sleeping in her bed. Ahmaud Aubrey, murdered on February 23rd, 2020, by white men acting as self-appointed community watchmen. George Floyd, suspicion of using a counterfeit $20 bill. Dante Wright, murdered during a traffic stop. Unfortunately, the list could go on and on of the senseless murders too far long to be covered in this episode. It can no longer be ignored that racism is systematic in America and it plays a major role in causing black men to be cast as targets for murders. Thank you. Welcome back to Just a Little Bit. In this segment, 40 on the 40 about black history, the power and strength of black people. After reviewing the names that I just spoke, if that ain't enough black power for you, for us to still be alive and remain here in America as a force to be reckoned with, then I don't know what black history is. Sankofa moment. This is a word that comes from the Twa language that means to go back, to fetch, to bring forth our history. And we are honored today to have as guests in our studios a lady who's doing research on one of the last hangings in the state of Florida, Fort Lauderdale in particular, and that of Reuben Stacy. So please help me welcome to the stage Miss Mary Ross Milligan, uh, who is documenting the Reuben Stacy hanging and the real Reuben Stacy? So please help me welcome Miss Mary Ross Milligan. <laughs> Miss Mary, how you doing? I'm wonderful. How are you? I Thank am you for having me. Well, you you more than welcome. You you know I am more than 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 um, um, elated to be a part of history, 
And I know that what you do is truly needed. Uh, you found a story that needed to be researched and the proper uh, information given. You want to tell us a little bit about that? Who are you? Okay, I'm Mary Russ Milligan. Mm -hmm. I was born with a twin sister. Her name is Martha. Uh, of course, I have more sisters than brothers, but, you know, that twin sister always stands out a little bit more than others. I was raised in Sweden East States, mm -hmm. and the area where Dr. Sistrunk had all the peacocks and all of that strolling up and down the streets of 23rd Avenue at that time. I attended Dillard High School, so I'm an alumni of Dillard High School, and I attended Nova Southeastern and continued my education and early childhood education and opened my own daycare mm -hmm. for women that were struggling, young girls doing that era that did not have places to carry their babies or anyone to keep them. So I gave up my college career so that I can help those young ladies. And I'm so grateful that I did that today. And I was encouraged by Mr. Bradley, James Bradley, Mr. and Mickey Hansons, yes. who walked in my grandfather's footsteps and continued the work of journalism. Mm -hmm. So here I am. You know, you know, Miss, Miss, Miss Mary, uh, that is a very uh, detailed uh, uh, description of who you are. But, but, but more important than that is the fact that you come from this soil. You know, you, you know about it. You took enough interest in a story that was told that you wanted to go a little deeper. Uh, and and so, so we're grateful for that. But tell us a little bit about uh, what got you on this road uh, to do this research. Okay. Well, as a family genealogist and researching my very own family, I stumbled across Reuben Stacy's family. Uh, so it was Broward County Trailblazers that asked me to uh, do the story of Reuben Stacy as I, they knew that I knew about the Stacy family doing my research because I am a part of the Broward County Trailblazers as well. Mm -hmm. And uh, so that's how I got started in the Reuben Stacy story. But I was actually doing this story for maybe six years now. Mm -hmm. Okay, six years. Yes. Okay, so some of the things that we have read about Reuben Stacy has not been truthful. Uh, they would uh, they would allow us to believe that Mr. Stacy was just a nobody. And what have you found out about about Reuben? Well, I found out that he was a man that had a family, and he came from a a very prominent family, and with very rich history so all of that's going to be unfolding as my story unfolds mm -hmm. okay so you don't want me to ask too much about unfolding your story is that what you're saying is that what you're saying mary i understand that's good that's good okay okay thank you. i won't do that i'll let you limited access <laughs> i'll let you do that you know but but also mary there there was a uh um uh, uh, this 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 person that you you interviewed via video, Miss Irene Slaughter. Who is she? Oh my goodness, she was just as sweet as a bumblebee. Mm -hmm. I tell you, she was the matriarch of the Stacy family, ninety two years old, and uh, she wanted her story told. And there was just so many stories going on, and so much politics involved, and she didn't want to give her story to a politician. And so she found out about me, this little local town girl that was doing history. Mm -hmm. And so she wanted me to do her story. And I'm going to tell her story as she wants me to tell it. Okay. And not the way that our politicians are expecting me to tell it. Oh, boy. Sounds like, uh, Miss, Miss, Miss Ross, you, you're getting ready to really uh, set history straight, if you will. Exactly. That's okay. exactly what Miss, Miss Slaughter wanted. Okay, good. Okay. Now, how does uh, Irene and the family of Reuben Station feel about the photograph that shows him hanging from a tree in Fort Lauderdale? Okay, they're not very happy when they see that photo because they want to see Reuben uh, remembered as a person uh, uh, with family values. Mm -hmm. So they're mm -hmm. not very happy with that photo. I'm not going to go in detail. I'm going to leave that because that's a part of the stuff that you have uncovered. And, and so I, I don't I don't want to bring it before the audience before you have the opportunity to tell that story. Okay. Uh, because there is some, uh, what I understand, there are some connections to that picture and to the Stacy family 
with the Martin family. Right, okay. exactly. Okay, okay. Right. So, mm -hmm. as um, I mean, I, you know, I know we apologize to the family uh, for mm -hmm. that era, and I don't even know if there was an era because the picture surely looks like Ruby, mm -hmm. and it, it very well indicated that in the Sun Sentinel. So, that's something that we would have to follow up on as well. Mm -hmm. But I would say that um, the family members and readers will learn more about the association of Mary and Hayes Turner and Reuben Stacy and the head. So there's just a bundle of information about to unfold here. Mm -hmm. And you know, you know, you know, Miss Mary, you, it, it, as, as we uh, talked earlier, when we deal with history, you know, it's like peeling the onion. Mm -hmm. You know, you take one layer and you find other things. What, what else are you discovering about a uh, Reuben that, that folk don't, don't normally, don't, don't know about. And I don't want you to tell me your whole story now, but just, you know. Okay, one thing I can say that Reuben was, uh, we do know that he was identified as being a strong, he was a strong uh, man of color, mm -hmm. very handsome. And I noticed that we have some videos out there that portray him as his dark skinned fella which he was a very fair-skinned fellow that mm -hmm. actually looked pretty white. Mm -hmm. So there's just a lot of things like that that's going to be told about Reuben. Mm -hmm. he's, and he was a person that was very professional. He had skills and mm -hmm. things of that nature. So he wasn't this person that they were identifying him mm -hmm. as. So. As, a, as a drifter, a vagrant. Right, exactly, mm -hmm. exactly. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Okay. No. Okay. Now, so how can how can how can we get in contact with you uh, uh, to find out more, or even if we have family members that perhaps want to join in in in, mm -hmm. in, in, in helping you with your documentary? Okay. Mm -hmm. I can be reached at Mary Russ nine five four at gmail dot com. My telephone number is nine five four six eight three seven five eight nine. That's Mary Russ954 at gmail.com or 954-683-7589. And I can be reached anytime, day or night. Mm -hmm. Okay, let me, one, one, one last thing before, before we go. Uh, uh, I know that, that you have uh, a curator working with you and Mr. Derek Davis. Uh, yes, yeah. absolutely. Okay, okay, so, so, so what is Derek's role in this? Well, Mr. Derrick is the reason why I'm actually sitting here today. So I'm so grateful for, you know, him inviting me to do the story for the Trailblazers. So it was him that asked me to uh, cover the Ruben Stacy story. And uh, thanks to him, and I have to give Commissioner McKenzie, which is not here, uh, credit for uh, supporting me through my research chain. Uh, because this story can be quite, it was quite expensive doing the research, you know, just, traveling. Okay. So I have to thank some of those supporters for mm -hmm. what they have done for me. Okay. So if somebody wanted to get in contact with you to offer support to help you in what you're doing at those those numbers that you called out, yes. uh, they can do that. Yes, absolutely. Okay. Is there anything that you want to say that we might have not covered in this particular episode? I'm sorry, what was that? No, no, is there anything specifically that you want to say? I know that 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 our listeners and viewers can actually follow you through the West Side Gazette mm -hmm. in your interviews, your videos, as well as your stories. Mm -hmm. So is there anything else that we can tell them? Well, you know, I, I want to say this. I know that um, the system, I believe, has failed Ruben. And so during my research... I've learned that in the larger cities, it's so hard to retrieve information. But when we're dealing with the small towns, the records are more accessible to the community. So if we can have people to, you know, just come forth and, and feel free and comfortable with talking about the story, and then without it being politics in the play, because that's the way Ms. Slaughter wanted it to be told. Okay. So more in a Christian and a family-based matter. So mm -hmm. that's the reason why I'm unfolding the story in eight articles mm -hmm. so that we can just make it just nice and smooth. Okay. Okay. Ms. Russ, I certainly appreciate you. 
And I want to thank uh, Derek for Derek is in the audience. You can't see him, but Derek Davis, who was the curator over at the old Dillard Museum, as well as a member of the Trailblazers, uh, who is a recorder of history in his own rights. So I want to say thank you to you, Miss Russ, and to you, Derek. And please, if you are willing to help uh, extend some financial support to this endeavor, uh, please use those numbers and contact uh, Miss Russ and let's see if we can bring another one of our stories to fruition. Thank you. You know, it's always good to be a part of greatness, you know, even if you don't make it. My dad once told me, he said, son, everybody can't go in the beehive. Sometimes the bees have to stand around on the outside. And if some honey drops, then you're right there to get some. I, I want to introduce us to uh, a gentleman who is uh, up and coming. This is our What's Up segment and it concerns our community. James Lee is an Afro-Cuban Haitian. You know, he's a multicultural person and he brings all of that energy in the work that he does. So please help me in welcoming James Lee to the stage. Please come on up, James Lee. What's up, James Lee? <laughs> How What's, you doing? I'm fine, bro. How you doing? I'm doing amazing. Yeah, I, I know you are. You do some amazing work. But here, there's another interconnection here. Where did you go to high school at, James Lee? So, I just recently graduated from Dillard High School. V! V! Yay! Yay. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, class of 2020. Okay, that's great, man. That's great. You, you graduated during a time that's going to be noted in history. You are a pandemic graduate. <laughs> pandemic. <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah, but that says a lot about you. Endurance, brother. I mean, by the time by the time the pandemic had started, the Zoom classes had started, I was already over it, man. I was ready to get out of the door. Mm -hmm. I was. Okay. But you know, I'm thankful for Dillard. It's an amazing school, and you know, we got I got to give my big ups to them because they they did what they had to do mm -hmm. every single day. So they had something to work with you, bro. You brought them something to work with. Don't sell yourself short now. I mean, I do my best. Okay, good. Good. That's what we're talking about. Okay, now doing your best. What are you doing? What is it that that James Lee do? And so, give it to us, man. So right now, um, I'm currently the artist in residency at the Cistron Cultural Center. This building, thankful, thankfully, as a result of my connection with Grace Cool and her company, um, well, and her community. So previously, I was at Bailey Contemporary Arts up in Pompano Beach painting as their artist in residency, but my residency had ended, and so we decided to, you know, not necessarily part our ways, but you know, I, my contract didn't get extended, so that was cool. Mm -hmm. But you know, I'm thankful for them, and they put me in contact with Grace and all that good thing. Um, now, right now, Grace and I are working on figuring out what this residency will entail and what the final culmination will be at the end of it, and like what I'll be presenting to the community as a result of our collaboration and our partnership. But you know, right now, I'm just continuing to work on paintings and continue to create as much as possible and being mindful of all of that, so, yeah. You know, when I sit here talking to you, man, I just get this spirit that I, I just want to jump up like outcast and say, go ahead, say, you know, you, you, I mean, there's something about you innately, innately, mm -hmm. you know, uh, artistic, you know. Uh, so what is it that you want to present uh, as a part of this collaboration, if you will? What is it that you want to do, James? So right now, I'm, Right now I'm just working on making work that I feel is, how do I say, right now I'm just exploring making work about just the portraiture and black bodies and a way of contributing to the broader conversation of like art history. And to those who aren't privy to art history and what that means is just creating portraiture that doesn't necessarily address any particular issues in regards to polit politics or anything like that, but just making work about black people and, b and black bodies existing. Mm -hmm. And the reason why I'm doing this is because I'm committed to, I'm, cr I'm committed to creating work that I feel doesn't necessarily center trauma or things that make us feel negatively. Like I genuinely just want to make paintings because they look nice and they make people feel good when they see them or make people happy when they see them because I, Mm -hmm. Keep going, you because, good? <laughs> because I, as, as an individual, know what this medium means to me and how it's impacted me previously and how I'm passionate about seeing myself represented in the work that I create. Well, I, I know, you know, uh, life takes us through different 
turns and different places. Um, have you had the privilege of capturing uh, a figure that was bigger than life? Um, as of right now, no, not mm-hmm. currently. Um, and I, and I guess a lot of that has to do with I. I'm just not connected with any kind of figure that's larger than life. I really just paint people that I'm familiar with and people within my community because those are the people that are most readily available. Mm-hmm. But I'm sure at some point I'll get the opportunity to do so. And, you know, like all things, I'll be sure to honor their their portraiture and their, you know, mm-hmm. and capture the image as best as I possibly can. And that's a, po- that's a positive reaction. Uh, you know, you said earlier how you didn't want to uh, uh, paint uh, what, what, what's the term? Uh, Traumatic images. Yes, imagery. Yes, 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 yes. So, so, but in this case, I understand that there's a possibility that you, uh, in all your, your artistic abilities, mm-hmm. and all your spirit, will get a chance to do a portrait of one of our, our icons that mm-hmm. has just recently transitioned to glory. Mm-hmm. Congressman Al C. Hastings. Yes, and, and so. Th- that's, a, that's a big thing, bro. I mean, <laughs> I know, I know, I know. Man, that's, that's a bro, bro. That's huge, man. That's huge. You can do it. Mm-hmm. You know, you know, you got the same spirit. James Lee, I think that's an honor, bro. And I can't wait to see it. I mean, that is an honor, and I, you know, and for me, it's less about. For me, it's just about give, being given the opportunity to even do that. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like being offered up an opportunity to paint someone as prolific as Alcee Hanks or like as impactful I would say to the community because you know not we aren't oftentimes given these opportunities but for me it's like honoring this individual is what's really important to me you know what I mean because like you can a lot can be said about a portrait but for but at baseline and a lot of in a lot of different ways you're remaking this image and you're immortalizing this individual you know what i mean like anybody okay. can take a picture but at the same okay. time it takes a lot of time you. and attention to make a painting i got you i got you i understand now okay but well, james lee is there anything that you you want to leave us with before uh, this session goes i mean I, I could sit here and talk to you all day long man i can draw stuff from you <laughs> but is there anything that that you want to leave us with man a profound statement or something? I don't know if I'm not profound, but, <laughs> but I do want to leave here with giving my deepest and most sincere thanks to Grace Cool and everyone who's been able to provide me with the space to paint and also just being thankful and sharing that I'm th- and just being thoughtful about being here and making sure that I, you know, that the people who have entrusted me to do this thing are know that I got their back and that I'll make the most of it. Okay, that's great, man. We certainly appreciate you, James Lee. Mm-hmm. And we pray for great success for you, bro. Mm-hmm. Okay? Thank you. No problem. All You're right. Welcome. Divine thoughts on filling the seat of Congressman Al C. Hastings. What have we learned from our past political leaders who have succumbed to natural orders while in office? What have we learned from current leadership about how to serve? What have we learned from politics when we allow people who have been brought to be put into races to divide the vote and somebody else walks in because we have allowed pride, selflessness, and the want of an unassumed position of leadership to qualify who we are. It seems as if we have lost our way. We have lost our way, given into artificial intelligence. We do not talk face to face like we used to. Yeah, blame it on the pandemic. We blame everything else on it. With the transitioning of Congressman Al C. Hastings to glory, it is more than his seat that we may lose. We may lose our footing, our leverage, our representation of who we are as a people. Some of those who are vying for this position will have to resign from their elected position, which leaves their vacancies to be appointed by a governor who does not give a damn about people who look different than he have different views concerning politics, and who are not a Republican. Let's face it, the governor is a Trumpite, a sycophant, and we all know what that means. Yes, there are cold words, and Trumpism is a cold word for racism and other isms that do not bode well for democracy in America. 
It has often been said that South Florida is an environment of collective talent like no other community in the country. Being here in Broward County, Florida, garners an array of diversity. We are special as there is plenty of ideology, leadership, entrepreneurship, political interests, and community service to keep everybody busy. Our communities are vastly divided by cultures, political jurisdictions, and mainstream integration. There's a great respect for trailblazers who advocate for our issues through the civil rights movement. With the formation of a generation ready to lead, advocate, inspire, and conquer successes, the question of the hour is, what do our people need and how can we accomplish those objectives so our communities continue to evaluate and elevate culturally. Some of the opposition here in Broward County and the state of Florida may come from those who feel like the five constitutional officers who are all black might just be enough for you people. Then the question is, who is not afraid of the browning of America? So think longer and harder about your reasons the implications and the forces seen and unseen before we create a pool of people that reinforces the diminishing opportunities to be an unapologetic black force for justice. So brothers and sisters, remember, if you choose to run, make sure you're not running from. Just a little bit is brought to you in part by Destination Sistrunk. Broward County Culture Division and Greater Fort Lauderdale Convention and Visitors Bureau. Destination Sis Trunk is a door to explore. For more information, please visit www.destinationsistrunk.com. And remember, it's all good in the hood. <laughs>